Hey guys, it's Josh from JMP Cycle, and today we are finally getting the custom frame put together, and uh, we're gonna be kind of explaining that step by step. Pap, your thought you were saying? I uh, put the triple tree out first so we have the stability of the tire in the front while okay. we're doing that work in the back, maybe. All right. About my mess, this is how we operate. Yeah, usually we got a mess everywhere, and that's just how we roll, so. Welcome to the episode. So basically this is a 1995 triple tree and uh, it's aluminum on the top and I think the bottom. Uh, actually yeah, both fully yeah. aluminum. So this is going to yeah, be... this is off the old frame sitting over by the trash can. Yeah, this is going to be weight reduction. Uh, kind of a two for one special. So we got to grease this stuff too when we put it together. So the grease is running the shelf. Should be, no. You carrying the top of the triple tree around with you? Well, that's a good question. Oh, there it is. Alright, so basically, we gotta grease these. I get the privilege of yeah, having the gross finger. Press on to the bottom. Move that all the way around. Have to keep the grease on the upper side so as it warms up and heats up, it'll run down into the bearing as it in the speak out of the mic. Keep your here. grease to the upper side and that way as it you use the bike it'll keep drifting grease down into the bearing and it won't rust. Alright that should be good. Okay. Top bearing sitting right on that cloth thing here. I see right it. Cloth. So that's that. Let's uh, grease it. Oh, I gotta grease it before. Grease that bad boy. Alright, so we gotta grease the top bearing and we'll set it down in there. Should be pretty juicy. Pretty juicy, there you go. Something like a little juice. Mm -hmm. Key to life, a little lubrication, boys. We'll probably have to edit that out. I don't know. Leave it. We're wet and wild here at JMP. <laughs> edit. Sir, put them down all the way. Okay. Clean my finger. Okay. No. Uh, and we need the, all that. The rubber. The rubber. The, there, everything's in order. Mm -hmm. See how I got it laying there? It's just how they go on, one after the other. Alright, so. Right, so we got the uh, dust seal that goes on first. The dust seal? Right, on top of that. Okay. And then on top of that, you get this uh, locking nut. Locking nut. It goes on top of that. Okay, grab a screwdriver. Give that a tap. Through the bearing, we 
complete and bearing is good. So. Now right, this goes uh, here. This goes on to that. And then there's a washer that goes on top of the piece okay. here. This is probably... I think it's on the right spot. I do believe. Facing all the way back towards the frame. Yeah. And you got your washer that goes on here, supposedly. Oh, uh, wait, we gotta put uh, this one in there. Wait. That goes in. Just like so. That sits there. Now, does this here go up by the nut? Yeah, I think it goes up. No. I think so. Just walk it at nothing. Then we got to get the <coughs> special, what is this, the 32? Well, I wouldn't tighten that totally. Hey, a little bit. Put it on, yeah, just a little because we're going to have to align these tubes. Yeah. We're have to slip up. We're going to slip the forks in there first before we. We'll probably put that. the forks in after the swing arm just because it'd be easier to. Get it in, I think. Or I guess we could put them in now. Well, I'm thinking if you, if you put the forks in now, then when you tighten this up, you're going to be everything's going to be straight. I agree with that. All right, let's. Uh, right here. Now, the question is, where are all of the bolts that go into this? I don't know. Oh. Uh, these are all right, that's. You're right. Yeah, that goes in there. So we found the bolts. Surprise me. Okay, zip them up. <laughs> now are these pretty straight? Triple straight on this? Are these bolts all the same? Oh, that's what I wanted to check. Uh, yeah, well, you can turn the bottom too. Yeah. No, there's longer ones and shorter ones, John. So there's four of each, so we gotta figure out which ones are which. Short one's down the top. That's a short one there. And plus you got two in here. But these are pretty corroded, so I don't know. That's short that one. thing is really long there. That one's really long there. Yeah, this is definitely part of the mess. This one here was the one that holds the uh, just get the same lens. This is something different here. These two don't belong. I put the ones that do belong in here. What do you, how many how many do we have? Eight. Okay, here. Now these two are the same. Hold these two. These two are the same. Now, which one, let's see, let's, You got the longer ones or the shorter ones? I got the longer one. The longer one went here. So the short one's on the bottom? All right, I got the short one, let me see. I got the short one. Short one's going to the bottom. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I tore this apart like a while ago, so. Yeah, the parts have been laying around forever. I mean, the stuff lays around, it just. We're just gonna slightly put these in for now. We'll, uh, let's start to hold up a little bit. You're close. Eyeballing it is really, really close. Okay. Right. So the forks are on. Okay. So now we got a little stability here while we're working on that back. Put these 
floor was sitting on the floor. So now we're going to be putting the aluminum swing arm in, uh, which should fit. <laughs> should. That's what they say. That's what they say. Well, that's what we say. I don't know if anybody's ever... Well, I've seen the MD30 swing arm on bikes, so it's got to work. All right, now we need these. These things have got to go. In here, right? Well, on here. Oh, in here. They all have their... Uh, gotta get the right ones. Well, in the right places. Well, we could have cleaned these up a little bit. Why don't we uh, shut this operation down for a minute? Nope. We already tried. Them. Adjuster. Put these big giant bolts in for us. Now we're going to work on this swing arm. All right, two of those go on here, yeah. right? All the same though. Yeah, I mean, the linkage. Oh, no, the, the swing arms are different. Well, that's what I'm looking for. That's a swing arm there, I do believe. You think? Yep. Like that? And this one here? I think. This one is definitely. Well, this one's pretty tight, unless there's a difference on the other side. That one could definitely go in there. That one. Alright, so the caps are on. I think that Watch one. the camera here, right beside us, actually in front of it. Now, Pat, if you could grab me the. I want to see which ones of these go on here. Oh. Well, it has to be two of these, so... One of them there. One of them there. Well, when you fill these with grease... Alright, now this here... And this... This comes off of here. It does, yes. But I think both sides are identical on this. Do believe. Yeah, it would be pointing down. Yeah. How do you call it? So be pointing down on it. So uh, these two will go on here. Yeah, All fine. right. Oh, I like that. Well, there's problem number one. Huh? It's got to fit through here. So whatever you've got in the way of these. What is that? You've got an axle in your hand. Yeah, that's what that's that's the front axle. Is it the front? Well, this is the correct size. This isn't. The hole's bigger. I need one with a bigger hole. This okay. isn't the front axle, hole. is it? Is it the front axle? There's one laying on the ground here with a big hole. Is this the front axle for the bike, or is this the swing arm axle? Because there's a difference. I'm thinking swing arm because it's painted white. All right, we'll check it and see if it's the right left. Oh, that would be down here, wouldn't it? Where would that thing go? I, mean, I guess it would be through here. Yeah, that's it. Okay. You need another cap. So. You're a better window or door than a window. Well, you need another <laughs> cap there, so. So we learned downstairs has caps on it. Are we off. missing a cap? You only have one with a big hole. Well, there's got to be another one. I don't see another one with a big hole there, do you? And this. Is that a big hole? No. Mm -hmm. That's the one here. Okay. That's why you keep parts separate. You don't throw everything in the same can. And they're different sizes. Uh, yeah, all the time. <laughs> <laughs> all right, now let me look over here. See what uh, here, could you uh, pull that axle bolt and then I'll put this in place so you can slide it through? Oh, uh, yeah, okay, that goes off of there. Uh, it's fitting, these fittings underneath. Okay, so the fittings go down. Yeah, yes, I know. 
Hold up. The fittings go down like this. Are we going to put that on first? Oh, yeah. Okay. Let's go down. They face out that way. You got the, in here. got the correct bolts for all that over here. Too much pain. This one. Okay, let's see what we got. This one's probably one of these. Maybe that goes in here? Uh, check the length. That's, that's the vital part. No, it's going to be longer. Short bolts go on this. Side. No, no, not in there. Oh, you mean the top? That doesn't seem right either. There, the grease fittings on the top of the spring. This thing oh, the here. shock would also play a role in this too. This Grab the shock and fit it up to the top and then we can kind of see how this all... There's grease fitting in that faces upward. On this? Yeah. yeah. Uh, it, this goes on here like this. There's a bolt there that goes in there. Because of those caps. Mm -hmm. Because they're dirty. Dirty the ground in there. Just... Mm -hmm. Oh, they're dirty. Mm -hmm. Filthy. Move it up. I had to beat this thing apart. Okay. Start that bolt through. Which one? Same size as this one here. You better. <laughs> I'm not used to working in front of the camera. Junior. <laughs> Don't forget to support Pat. Subscribe to the channel. We need your subscriptions <laughs> desperately. Desperately. <laughs> desperately. Now you got a real long bolt somewhere. It goes in that. Yeah. Oh, the big one. Okay, it goes all the way through everything. So. so that. All right, let's put that up in there. So we can see how this all loops itself. I imagine it's probably this here that holds that together. What are you uh, what are you thinking? Well, that is definitely not on there, right? No, this is backwards. Maybe the other way. Let me look at the other bike. Take this. That's my brakes. Grease fitting will be on the other side. Grease fitting goes to the back, yeah. Sorry about that. Well, that got really friggin' tight. Cheesy beats. Yeah. 
plus your knuckle experience here, I can see it. Yeah. Take this on. Just give it a couple hang ons. Now, I'll show you this is the back. It goes this way. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's it right there. Okay, there you go. Here. Is it has to hook on to that? What are you talking about? The swing on has to hook on somewhere. The swing on. So it's up in here. You yeah. have both caps on? No, no. Yeah, but this one has to be. Yeah, right there. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, now swing it up in. Now this here's bolt. Here's a bolt that goes in here. Right. And a big bolt goes through here. Come on this side and slide it across. So get it in. Which side would you prefer to have the bolt and nut on? Left nut. Big thing on the right, I guess. This just does not seem right to me. It is right. How are we looking there? You need to go up, down, back. Uh, you got to come forward on that side. Man. You sure? Oh, um, no. You want to go forward a little bit? Oh, there it is. Let me get that one. I think this is it right here. Uh, I just want to use a maniac. maniac you know. Where's the mallet? It's not available. Why go to the hammer? It's not available. It's not available. <laughs> okay. You let me see. Push it over. Okay, right there. Okay, go through on that. Mm -hmm. Now, is this actually going on now, or do you can't do that? No, it should be fine. It doesn't hurt it at all. Once it started in, oh, it pops right through. Now, first, we gotta get a bolt in here. Oh, we gotta tighten these ones on the bottom, too. Yeah. Which bolt is it? Those are your options. Those look too short for me. Uh, this is the crazy bolt. Look at what you call it. I do recall this one. It's this guy here. Yeah. It fits in a sleeve, like a catch. Yeah. It's got a flat on it. Yeah, let me show you. Hello. So there's the little sleeve that slides into this section, and you have your nut on the other side. Now, this is our first time building one of these, so uh, yeah, we're, we're winging it here. We're pretty much winging it, so uh, don't don't think that we're a freaking expert by any stretch. Yeah, that rubber thing's probably screwed you up. No, I'm past it. I just need the other side to go down. Okay. <laughs> you got tap the bolt in a little further. I don't know about that. Uh, let me get the big crescent wrench. Hold on. I'll get the big crescent wrench and grab the grab puzzle on that. Uh, turn it down. Turn it down, yeah. If I can, if I can get this wrench over it. Oh, yeah. Okay. Ready? Yeah. Right there. Right, you're, you're pulling away from it. Yeah, but we're all set. This is. Well, got to come down. Maybe uh, tap it with a piece of wood down. I think that might be the ticket. Give it a few taps right here with a piece of wood. A little piece of wood should be over on the bench. I just cleaned the bench, and as you can see, it's already a mess. There's a drill we were looking for. Uh -huh. Go down. Okay. You 
maybe you probably can't start it in this side. It has to go in that way. Yeah. It's got to go down. Lift, lift this thing back up. Okay, right there. Close, Josh. It is. Uh, how about uh, grab me the Allen kit and I'll give it a few turns and see if we can push it forward. Does that have an Allen head on it? It does. Uh, Allen wrenches are downstairs? Maybe, but we're not even close on this side now. Hmm? The bolt's like not even close. What do you mean? And, uh, it's not going to fit in the hole because it's like cattywampus. This off the bike that we didn't know anything about. It. I mean, it would be bad. No, it wasn't bad. It was, uh, could be how it's lining up because of the 200, the frames different. No. Uh, yeah, we got to get the Allen wrenches. We have an Allen wrench in there and try to yeah. do something like this. Right the ship. Alright, let me grab another wrench. You may want to even take that other bolt out. Put this bolt in first, maybe. But, well, then you have to force that in last. Ugh. Well, always a problem when you're custom building something, to something that it's not for. Try this at home. Okay, so basically uh, we ran into a little issue with alignment. Pap's going to explain. Everything isn't quite lining up the way it's supposed to. Something is amiss. So we're going to have to take it back apart, check all the parts, and start all over. So, that's it. Or we're going to have to beat it into submission, which uh, is also an option. Pretty much the swing arm bolt will go in right there but then on the other side it's not quite moving up to the spot where it needs to be so i've seen these swing arms on 200 bikes so i just don't understand what we're missing maybe 
something is backwards or I don't know. We'll have to just take a look at it. Again, this is our first time building one of these, so there's going to be stuff like this that happens, but uh, we'll get there. This is just a quick update for you guys. All right, thanks. Hey guys, it's Josh from JNP Cycle, and we're back at it today in the garage working on the custom build. So we were having some complications uh, in the last segment, um, as you'll see in the final product of the video, getting this linkage to work. This is the 1996 XR250 linkage, and it has the grease fittings and everything, which is what we wanted to use. Unfortunately, it's offset to the left side, as you can see. So what we ended up having to do is use the original linkage from the XR200, and so far it's all went together pretty good. We do have a bit of a space on this side, which you probably can't see in the camera with it uh, not tightened down, but we're gonna put a washer in there, uh, which is, this is the perfect thickness. So we're gonna put this washer in here and that should fix the issue. We already got the swing arm hooked in and it's uh, lined up very nicely. It's perfectly straight. So um, we should be good now. So at, at this point we're gonna have the, the linkage together, and then we're gonna get working on getting the shock mounted um, as well. So uh, basically, um, when you're building this, you're gonna need your original XR200 linkage and a spacer as such uh, to get it to, um, uh, to be put together. Also wanted to share with you guys, we picked up a Yamaha BW200. So uh, we actually traded my grandfather's XR250 for this, and um, not that we really needed another bike, but we just thought it'd be cool to get um, a big wheel bike. We've never had one. So we're gonna probably take it down to the trail a day and uh, clean it up a little bit. Hard to get parts to these old bikes. Um, <laughs> so uh, so yeah, this is something we picked up. It's, um, it's just cool. It's just a cool bike. So uh, not a big Yamaha guy, but uh, the big wheels are certainly interesting. So uh, we'll probably take this out on the trail a day and clean it up some more. and get some new uh, new plastics and uh, clean up this tank a little bit and get new stickers on there so try and make it look as nice as possible but it's a, it's a great little bike and um, starts easy and it is definitely unique to ride if you've never ridden a big wheel bike it's totally different than uh, than a regular dirt bike it um, it doesn't quite want to turn when you want to so anyway that's just a quick update on that and uh, like I said we're gonna continue to put this together. I'll probably throw a time lapse up and I'll just kind of explain as we go uh, the rest of it. So thanks for coming along for the uh, custom build. And um, like I said, we got a lot of stuff in the pipeline. Don't forget to subscribe, hit that button. It's free for you and it helps our channel, um, motivates us to put out great content every week. So thank you so much for coming along and watching our videos and uh, enjoy the rest. Thanks. Hello. Hey guys, welcome back to another one. It's uh, Josh from JMP Cycle. So today in our video, uh, basically we're going over the kind of the how-to on how to mount up um, newer XR250 suspension um, to an XR200. I know there's plenty of documentation out there on how to do that with a 86 to 89, but there's pretty much nil when it comes to uh, putting together the suspension and the um, swing arm for a a newer XR200. So there's a few adjustments you'll have to make to, to get that to all work. Um, a couple things we ran into here was the uh, the linkage, as you'll see in the different segments of the video. Um, getting that correct linkage in there, we ended up having to use the XR200 linkage, um, which doesn't have the grease fittings. I wish it did, uh, but it, it doesn't have it. Um, so uh, we ended up going with the, the XR200. We greased the best we could and then put it together. Um, new brake pads in the rear uh, caliper, so that's ready to rock and roll. Um, we're able to piece together uh, all the uh, the levers and things um, to get the rear brake working. Um, at this point we we're just trying to tap the uh, rear brake pedal in there and get that working. Um, fairly uh, difficult process, but we uh, ended up getting it together. So. That was pretty much what we did in uh, this particular segment right here. Basically, uh, we are just making sure everything was lined up properly uh, in these shots, just to make sure that everything was proper. Essentially, the biggest problem you'll have is just lining up the XR200 uh, linkage with the uh, 250 swing arm. We had to use a 
spacer in there, uh, as we pointed out uh, in an, another shot, but um, you have to put a spacer in on the left side. Uh, the shock, we had to tap it in because it's a pretty tight fit uh, to get that in there. So not terribly tight. I don't think there's uh, too much tension on it that would cause a problem. But um, we had, did have to put some spacers on that right-hand side of the top of the shock, too, which I'll show in another shot. Um, so pretty much those are your, your main hiccups when uh, putting the, these pieces together. This shot here, we were working on getting the uh, washers into place for the top of the shock. Like I said, on the right-hand side, there was quite a bit of space there, so we ended up putting in four or five washers. I think it was five uh, washers on that one side. We drilled them out downstairs and, and uh, got them to the um, proper diameter so that the bolt would be snug against it uh, when we put that together. So um, no rattling there. Everything was very tight and uh, a successful install. Um, that is the easiest we've ever <laughs> had putting in that air box. Um, for some reason in the past, we have really struggled putting air boxes in bikes, but uh, that one went in super smooth. So the word of the wise on that is slide it in the back of the frame and uh, tilt it to one side and it uh, literally went right in. So um, if I ever have to do an XR200 uh, air box, um, that is going to be the way I'm going to do it. So um, basically just make sure you... Uh, pop it in the back. As far as the rear wheel, um, I had some trouble getting that lined up when we initially put it in. Um, wasn't so bad once we got it figured out. We, we typically don't work on bikes with disc brakes. Um, uh, typically we work on older stuff or just regular 200. So this is kind of a little bit outside of our wheelhouse, but we were able to get that all lined up um, properly. And uh, seems like it all went together pretty nice. It's nice having an 18 inch wheel for uh, tire selection. Um, we put uh, new uh, brake pads in there as well uh, to get that wheel uh, all set, set up in the back. Um, the uh, chain guard is actually bent. So we popped that chain guard off and, and bent it back into place so that it would uh, set snug against uh, the wheel there just to make sure that we weren't getting any drag from that piece. Um, so yeah, we got those, those parts together. Everything seems to be lining up really nice, um, with this bike. So, um, looking forward to getting this thing out on the trail. We, uh, I've put a great deal of thought and effort into, to making this thing, not just a custom build, but something that's just really fun in the woods. And, um, I think as far as 200s go, uh, you really can't beat having an 18 inch rim plus the, uh, the disc brakes. It's really, truly really the best upgrade you can do. So. In this shot here, we were working on the uh, alignment of the front wheel. Had a little bit of an issue with that. Um, got everything tightened up, and I think we were missing a spacer. We ended up having to pop pop that spacer in there. We were looking around trying to figure out where we where we put it. Um, when you work on bikes like we do, uh, and we're fairly unorganized, uh, you tend to lose stuff. So, hate to work that way, but uh, half the time we're uh, always in a hurry to get stuff done and just kind of messing around. So, yeah, it's just. Something we can work on, do a little better if we would uh, take our time and, uh, you know, just be more diligent about putting things in the, the right place when we put stuff away. Uh, we were having a hell of a time getting this uh, motor in here, uh, mostly because the brake had already been hooked up and I thought we wouldn't be able to get to the brake with the swing arm there. Um, so we ended up having to take the brake back off uh, to get the... Um, get the motor back in place. We just popped the brake back off and then uh, we got the brake back together and then I was able to get the motor in pretty easily after that. We tried it a couple of different ways. You're always supposed to bring it in from the right side of the bike. Um, if I was standing behind it, it would be the right side or if I was standing in front, it would be my left. So, um, you know, the, the motor just kind of sets down in there. We always leave that side cover off of the bike um, or the CDI boxes. So it's easier to get the, the motor to clear and then we put that uh, on when we're finished. So um, if you want to make it easier on yourself, just leave that cover off on the side and just pop it on when you're done getting the motor in place because it is a tight fit. Not to mention when you have a bigger swing arm on there, um, you'll have to make some adjustments to the uh, auto decompression lever. Um, basically that uh, helps to start the bike and it's in the way. Um, when you're trying to uh, get the motor 
in place when you have a bigger swing arm like this. So we were able to uh, just kind of work that thing in there and got all the uh, the bolts tightened up. The uh, <laughs> the brake on the back of this bike uh, kind of fought us the entire time. So uh, that's just one of those things you got to deal with when you're working on something that's a little different than stock. You're, there's always something you got to change or as somebody said on the the forum the other day, change one thing, you got to change three others. So uh, couldn't have been a, a truer statement. All right, we finally figured this all out. We could use the parts off of the 200. What we did is we used the bottom parts, this thing here. So basically the linkage from the XR All the linkage, and then what we did was we took the, the 250 shock, but it's offset, so, but it has a small cap on the top. Mm -hmm. So we had to use shims. We had to shim it with four washers on the right side to put it into the proper alignment mm -hmm. to get it straight. Yeah. So we had to use some washers. They're super tight okay. in there. We actually had to beat them in with a hammer. So they're nice and tight, no wobble at all. And we also used the washer, like I mentioned before, on the left side right here uh, where this um, uh, bolt comes in. So we used the, the bolt from the... Because uh, it was a sixteenth of an inch shorter, this mm -hmm. hub but it was in center where which we needed because the other one was offset mm -hmm. we couldn't get the thing together with it offset because everything went out of alignment right but everything is in perfect alignment so the other thing we had to do pat just did is when you do these custom builds and you have this um you have to run your shock up almost as high as you possibly can then move it back down a little bit right and then also the um, decompression lever this cable that usually has plenty of room when you have the stock uh swing arm on there now this one's fine I, it doesn't one quite was... fit so um we had to bend it just a just, little bit just a hair just uh, the tiniest just, little just bit so it doesn't thing. rub this this uh swing arm or swing case. arm yeah or the case so it, it just clears the case it just clears the swing arm. We had to take that brake off because that was fighting us. But the airbox went in really easy, which was surprising. Yeah, the brake fought us getting the motor in because you couldn't get it tipped in far enough with the brake mm -hmm. kept cutting into your hand. So, so yeah, that's the update. And we had it a little high to begin with, too. It might have been able to do it if we would have had it in the proper spot to start with. Yeah. Because we had it up a little bit. So, yeah. I'm just the... concerned right now is if when we put this foot peg on, are we still going to be able to get a lever yeah. on the brake to we get brakes? We should we'll have to check, we'll check that out it for clearance. If not, we'll have to bend that bar a little bit. Okay. Yeah, so that's just a quick update. We're going to go back to time lapse here and get the rest of this motor mounted in, and then uh, that'll probably be all for today. So, thanks. Hey guys, uh, we're back here for the final part of today's work. We uh, went ahead and got the motor mounted, um, got the front wheel, rear wheel, the swing arm, the linkage, everything kind of put in its right place. So uh, really surprised at how well some of this went together. Uh, some of it was a bit of a learning experience and I think um, at the end of this, I'll kind of detail out what exactly you're going to need to do to make this work if you're going to build something similar. So uh, basically it is going to take you through it. We have a uh, disc brake up front. Um, this is off the XR250 from 1996. We got the, uh, the XR250 forks, 
the triple trees. Um, this all bolted together, no problem. Um, so that was good. Uh, let's see here, what else we got? We got this uh, piece here. Uh, we're gonna have to make a mount for that or figure out a way to make that mount up. Um, so that's, that's a project for another day. Uh, the kickstand is gonna have to be lengthened. Uh, so we're gonna cut that, weld in a piece and then paint it. Um, the, uh, like I said, the linkage earlier, we went with the XR200 linkage. Um, so you're still getting a ton of uh, lift off the ground compared to the XR200 stock. And I'll go over uh, seat height and um, how much of an increase we get uh, from that. We went with the XR250 uh, peg here, um, or uh, brake pedal, um, so that actually worked out well. We cut this off of the other bike and welded it to the frame, so that's the, um, the reservoir for the rear um, braking system. Uh, new rear brakes on it. Uh, the ones that were on there were shot. The front's, front's fine, so we're going to stick with those. 18-inch um, rear wheel, which the stock 200 has a 17-inch uh, stock rear wheel. So you're going to get a little bit better hill climbing because you have a longer swing arm and a bigger rear wheel. Uh, gives you more tire selection at 18 inches. So um, bike's really coming together. Going to order a new air filter and some uh, filter spray because we don't have any. We have a bolt for that, but we're going to have to find it. Um, so yeah, that's kind of the update for today. Um, everything's coming together really nicely, surprisingly, uh, for all that we had to do. So we're just kind of trying to get the bike cleaned up a little bit. And uh, things are starting to come together. So we're getting there. And uh, like I said, if you guys uh, continue to support the channel and subscribe, we're hoping to get up to 45,000 subscribers. It's a lofty goal, I'm not going to lie. Uh, but that's what we wanted to get to, to give this bike away. So. Uh, if we get there uh, this year, you know, we can do that. I might change the contest the contest rules Maybe we'll put a certain amount of views for just this particular build together and then we can do the giveaway um, We'll so we'll see how that goes, but but for now uh, 45,000 subscribers is the mark we're trying to hit. Um, we've been growing steadily each month So I appreciate your guys support really helps us when we see those subscriptions and comments in the section for us um, makes uh, makes doing this fun. So I uh, appreciate your viewership and um, we'll have more next week. We'll probably finish this up next weekend. So the final video will be put out next weekend and then we'll do a ride. Um, and we might even do a ride with one of our uh, subscribers that we met. Uh, one of the gentlemen came out and purchased one of our other XR200s. It was kind of our family bike. Uh, we bring people along and ride. So um might go ride with him a day and uh we'll we'll get to have a fun time and uh and do that so look forward to uh more riding this summer and getting this build finished which is going to be great so really looking forward to taking this thing for a ride once it's done with the disc brakes front and back it's going to be really competitive uh one of a kind kind of bike and um uh you know there'll be there'll be some folks that say oh it's not that special well uh you go ahead and try and build one. Uh, it takes a lot of work to make this thing happen and a lot of time and thinking and, and how to engineer this. So it's, this is not just a bolt together bike. This is a custom build that takes a lot of your time and your effort to put together. So um, that being said, appreciate your guys' viewership and we will see you in the next one.